Hello students, glad to be back with you again. Today also, we will, I'll be taking class for class 10 social science. And the topic will be nationalist movement in Indochina. Now, if you remember, we have already done the first part of this chapter in the last session. So I hope and pray that you have gone to your textbook and you still remember the reasons, the causes which we have discussed about the previous session. In the previous session, we have discussed about how the France, okay, they got interested in Vietnam, how they came to Vietnam, why they came, and how they were able to bring Vietnam under their control. All those we have discussed in the last session. So today, let's discuss about how the Vietnamese, okay, how the Vietnamese, they started revolting against the France, because by now, the Vietnamese, they have come to realize that the way that the France were treating them was not the right way, okay? They were against colonialism. And so the Vietnamese, they decided to start revolting against the France. Now, in the last session, okay, we have discussed till the two philosophers, that is uh, Fan Bao Chao and Fan Chu Trinh. And we have discussed that these two philosophers, okay, they were greatly able to influence the Vietnamese people. But these two philosophers, their ideas were different. Their ideas were totally different. And that is, Fan Chu Trinh, he wanted to abolish monarchy, okay? He wanted to do away with uh, monarchy system, plus, he was greatly inspired by the French philosophers. So what he believed is, he believes that the Vietnamese, they will be able to learn something from the Western culture. And that is why, even though he wanted to do away with monarchy system, okay, he was still in favor, okay? He was still in favor of living under the France. Whereas the other philosophers, that is Fan Bao Chao, he favored monarchy system, okay? He wants the Vietnamese to live under uh, the kingship or the king, and he was not in favor of uh, learning something from the Western culture. That is, he wanted to drive out the France away from Vietnam. And so, even though they were able to influence the Vietnamese, both the scholars, they have, that is, their ideas were different, okay? Now, regarding these philosophers, that is, Fen Bao Chao, this man, what he did was, he decided to do something for the Vietnamese, and that is, he went to Japan, okay? He went to Japan and he introduced lots of, he introduced lots of societies there in order to uh, rejuvenate the Vietnamese. Now here, you will have one which is called as, we call it as the Go East Movement, okay? Now, Go East Movement means, in this Go East movement, what the Vietnamese did was hundreds of Vietnamese, they went to Japan and China in order to get education because they came to realize that the new education policy that the, Vietnam, uh, sorry, the French had introduced in Vietnam was not the right one. So in the Go East movement, hundreds of Vietnamese, they went to China and Japan in order to get education plus they also wanted to learn something. And that is, if you go back to class nine, okay? Last year in class nine, you have discussed about the Russian Revolution. And in the Russian Revolution, you have discussed about the Russo-Japanese War. Russo-Japanese War means the war that was fought between the Russian and the Japanese. And there, I'm sure your teacher must have explained it to you how a small Asian country was able to defeat the biggest country in the world. And that is called as the Russo-Japanese War. So the Vietnamese, they were so influenced by this, okay? They were so influenced with the Russo-Japanese War. And that is why hundreds of them, they went on this, this Go East movement to get education plus to learn from the Japanese how they were able to defeat the biggest country in the world. So all these events took place under Fan Bao Chao, okay? Then in Japan itself, Fan Bao Chao, he again introduced a new society which came to be called as the Restoration Society, okay? He involved all those Vietnamese who were there in 
uh, Japan and he formed this restoration society. But this was something which the Japanese did not agree to. And so what they did was the Japanese, they forced Fen Bao Chao to go away from uh, Japan and many of the Vietnamese were also sent for exile into Thailand. So all this happened because of these two philosophers. Now, Fen Bao Chao, even though he was no longer staying in Japan and even though he was no longer staying in Indochina, still then he was able to influence lots of Vietnamese in fighting against the French colonial policy, okay? But unluckily, that is unfortunately, he died in 1940, okay? Fen Bao Chao, he died in 1940 and a new phase, a new era came up in Vietnam. Now, when we talk about 1940, okay? Now, during 1940, we all know that a big event was also going on. And that is, we call it as the Second World War, okay? The Second World War was also going on during the time. And this time in Vietnam, a new leader came up who was called as Ho Chi Minh, okay? Ho Chi Minh. Now, Ho Chi Minh, if you translate it into English, it means he who enlightens. Everything is written there in your textbook, so please don't forget to go to your textbook, okay? So, this man, that is Ho Chi Minh, now he became the leader of Vietnam, that is the revolutionary leader. And what he did was, okay, he was able to make the people come to realize about their rights, he taught the people how to fight for their rights, plus, he even formed an army, okay? He formed an army which is called as Viet Minh. Which is called as Viet Minh, okay? Now, this Viet Minh, this is an army which is called as Gorilla's Army. Now, when I say Gorilla's Army, I'm not talking about the monkey or anything, okay? Here, when we say Gorilla's Army, Gorilla's Army means where? The stood, uh, sorry, the army, they were taught to fight in the jungle, okay? Soldiers fighting in the jungle or army fighting in the jungle, that is called as Gorilla's Army. And especially the Asian, okay, the Asian and the African people, we are so accustomed to it. In the Nagaland book also, in class 9, we have discussed about it. How the Britishers, they had to go for 10 expeditions in order to bring Naga Hills under their control because the Britishers, they were not adapted to the guerrillas warfare, whereas the Nagas, we were so adapted to it. So that is called as guerrillas army or guerrillas warfare. So this was introduced by Ho Chi Minh and he called it as Viet Minh, okay? And through this, they were able to fight against the French. Now, what happened here was, okay? The Second World War is already going on, as we have discussed. And I'm sure you all remember, Second World War, it broke out in 1939 and it ended in 1945, okay? Now it ended, uh, sorry, it started on 1st September 1939. And how it started was because of Hitler invading Poland. That is the Nazis, they invaded Poland on 1st September 1939 and that is how the Second World War broke out. And then the Second World War again, it ended in 1945 because of the US bombing the two cities of the Japanese, that is Nagasaki and Hiroshima. So in 1940, as I've said, the Second World War was going on and in the Second World War, what happened was the Japanese, okay? The Japanese, they were able to force the French. The Japanese, they were able to force the French to give them Indochina as a military base. So the war was going on and in the Second World War, the Japanese, they forced the French to give Indochina to the Japanese so that they can have a military base there. So that was how, what happened was, now the Vietnamese, they had to fight against the French on one side and on the other side, the Japanese also. Because now the Japanese, they have already established their military operation or their military base at Indochina, okay? But the 
the Japanese, okay, they were again forced. The Japanese were forced to go away from Indochina because of the interference of the Americans. So the Americans, they again entered on the scene and they were able to force the Japanese to go away from Indochina. So this shows that the Vietnamese nationalists, okay, the Vietnamese nationalists, they suffered a lot because as I've said, on one side, they were fighting against the French, but because of the Second World War, again, the Japanese entered. And so on the other side, they also had to fight against the Japanese. So that was the condition of the Vietnamese before they got their independence, okay? Now, the war came to an end in 1945. So with the ending of the war in 1945, the Americans, they forced the Japanese to give up Indochina. And the Japanese, they had to concede, they had to accept because of the American bombing their two cities, that is Nagasaki and Hiroshima. So with that, the Second World War also came to an end, plus the Japanese also, they retreated from Indochina. Now, after the Second World War had ended, now the Vietnamese, okay, what they did was they decided to keep on fighting against the France. And now after the war, the French, they had to face the army of the Vietnamese, that is the Viet Minh, the guerrillas army, okay, which was led by Ho Chi Minh. Now in this battle or in this uh, fight, the Vietnamese, that is the Viet Minh, they were able to topple. That means they were able to make the French give up the control of Indochina. So the French, they had to give up their control, their government was defeated. And the most important point is, what made the French decided to give up Indochina was, in the beginning, that is in the last session, we were discussing about colonialism. And I've told you that all those countries, okay, all those countries who follow colonialism policy, they are called as colonial power. And all this colonial power, they have an aim. Okay? The aim of the colonial power is profit. Whatever they do, they will do it just to get profit. So now the French, they were not getting profit. In fact, the war uh, which they are fighting against the Vietnamese, it was becoming so expensive, okay? It was becoming too expensive. So this made the French decided to give up Indochina. So that is how the Vietnamese, they were able to get their independence from Vietnam, okay? Uh, sorry, to get it from France. Then after this, okay, after this, after the war had ended with the France, they had a conference, which is called as the Geneva Conference. Everything is there in your textbook. Please go through it. Now, in this Geneva Conference, what they did was, the countries, they decided that Vietnam should be divided into two. That is, North Vietnam and South Vietnam. So, North Vietnam went under the control of Ho Chi Minh, and South Vietnam, it was placed under the control of Bao Dai, okay? Bao Dai, this was a man who was at one time ruling over uh, Vietnam on behalf of the France. So Vietnam was divided into two, North and South. Now with this, okay, after the Geneva Conference, again it led, okay, again it led to a serious involvement with the Americans. Now. The Vietnamese no longer they are living under the control of the France. But now what happened was US, okay, the USA, that is the United States of America, now they had in uh, they have interest in Vietnam again. So now they had to fight against the Viet uh, sorry, the Americans, okay? We call it as the Vietnam War. The Americans, in order to bring Vietnam under their control, they it led to the Vietnam War or Vietnamese War. We have lots of movies on that also. So if you want, you can just go through all those movies also if you want to understand better, okay? Now, in the Vietnamese, okay? Regarding the Vietnamese fighting against the Americans, in your textbook, they have mentioned a topic which is called as Ho Chi Minh Tri, okay? Ho Chi Minh Trail. 
Now, trail, this is to do with a road. It is a road, okay? Trail means a road. So, this topic is written there because here, this is to show how the Vietnamese, okay? How a small Asian country, so to say, how the Vietnamese were able to survive and win the war against the mighty USA. So, for this, reason this topic is given there in your textbook okay now regarding this Ho Chi Minh trail as I've said trail means a road okay a road or a route or footpath it can be also termed as a footpath also so here what the Vietnamese did was the Vietnamese okay they constructed lots of footpath okay they constructed lots of footpath and roads within the jungle connecting North and South Vietnam. So the Vietnamese, they constructed footpath connecting North and South. And on this footpath, okay, or on this road trail, what they did was they built hospitals also. Hospitals were also constructed at regular places. Then, uh, uh, so to say, supply houses. Houses were also built where they can keep their supplies and so on. And all these were transported by the women, majority of them by the women. So the women, they used to carry lots of loads on their back plus on their bicycle. And this is how they were able to transport the goods. So the trail was constructed and along the route, the Vietnamese, they also built hospitals. Okay, hospitals were also constructed. Then support bases were there all along. Okay, and so all this, were done by the Vietnamese. So what happened was, even though the US, okay, even though the US every day they were bombing it, again the Vietnamese quickly they were able to restore the road again. They were able to rebuild it because, as I've said, the Americans they also they were not used to this guerrillas warfare. So that was one advantage of the Vietnamese. So even though the Americans they used to bomb all this trail again the Vietnamese very quickly, they were able to rebuild it, okay? So that is the importance of this Ho Chi Minh Trail because this shows how the Vietnamese, they were able to survive and win the war against the mighty Americans, that is the United States of Americans, okay? Then in 1967, okay, in 1967, that is the president of America, President Johnson, he offered, okay, he gave a choice to the Vietnamese where he said that if they decided to come for a peace talk, then the U.S., they will stop the bombing. But when he said this, the leader of Vietnam, that is Ho Chi Minh, he replied, okay, that for so many years, for so many years, we have been struggling. We have been struggling and we have been fighting for our independence. So now no one can force us, okay? No one will be able to force us to surrender or even your nuclear power. The Vietnamese leader, he even told the president, even your nuclear power will not be able to make us surrender. So because of this, again, the war went on. That is the Americans, they kept on bombing the Vietnamese. And in 1972, okay, in 1972, President Nixon, that is the President of America, he ordered nighttime bombing on Vietnam for 11 days, continuously for 11 days. And this made the Vietnamese decided to ask for peace. So this made the Vietnamese decided that they need to go for a peace talk. So this is how, okay? So in January 1974, a peace settlement was signed in Paris and this ended the war with the Americans. So this is how the Vietnamese got back their independence or they got back their sovereignty. So with that, we've come to the end. But what I want to do today is I want to sum it up. I just want us to go all the way back to the first topic, okay, that is to the beginning, because we have taken class in the last session, and I'm sure some of you might have forgotten the points that we have discussed also, so let's just try to sum it up today, okay? So, as I've said, the chapter which we have taken is known, uh, 
the Indo, uh, nationalist movement in Indochina, okay? And Indochina, we have discussed the time that Indochina, it comprises of four protectorate, that is Laos, Cambodia, and Vietnam, plus Vietnam is again divided into two parts, which is called as Tonkin and Anan. Then we have also discussed that the France, okay? The France, they got interested in Indochina from the 17th century onwards, but it was only in the 19th century that they landed up in Vietnam. So the France, they landed up in Vietnam in 1858. Then the reason why the, Vietnam, uh, the French, they came to Vietnam was because of colonialism policy. Colonialism means extending of empire, okay? Extending of empire and making that country dependent on them. So that is called as colonialism. And France, she was a colonial power. Colonial power means all those countries, okay? All those countries who follow colonialism policy, they are called as colonial power. Then those countries who comes under the colonial power, they are called as the colonies. So that was to do with colonialism. So the French, they came to Vietnam, okay? Then in order to bring Vietnam under their control, what they decided to do was they decided to go for the development of agriculture, which we have discussed, and where within a few years, Vietnam became the third largest producer of rice in the world. But the problem here was, even though they had become the third largest producer of rice, all the profits, okay, the profits were being taken by the France. So because of that, there was a debate on that also. Then apart from going in for the development of agriculture, we have also discussed that the French, they introduced education, but to make sure that the Vietnamese, they don't revolt against them, to make sure that the Vietnamese, they don't start fighting for their rights, what the French did was they introduced a new education policy, okay? And in the new education policy, that is in all the textbook, the French had written that the Vietnamese were primitive, they were backward, okay? Even if they get educated, they are fit only to work in the field. So all these were done by the France to make sure that even if the Vietnamese, they get educated, okay? They will not start fighting for their Right, so all these were introduced by the France, okay? Then the Vietnamese, later on they came to realize that the new education policy which the France had introduced was not good. So what they did was they decided to go for the Go East movement where hundreds of Vietnamese, they went to Japan and China in order to get education. Plus, they wanted to drive away the France Okay, from Vietnam. So some of them, they went to Japan in order to discuss or in order to learn how the Japanese were able to defeat the biggest country in the world, that is Russia, which we call it as the Russo-Japanese War, which was fought in 1907. Okay? So all these were done by the Vietnamese in order to get their independence. On the other side, the France also, they introduced all those things because they want to make sure that they have control over Vietnam. But the Vietnamese, through their leaders, that is Fan Bao Chao, then Fan Chu Trin, okay, they were able to inspire them. And because of them, the Vietnamese also, they came to know about their rights, and that is how they started fighting for their rights. Then we have also discussed about Ho Chi Minh, okay, the famous leader, of the 20th century, he was one of the most influential leader during the 20th century, and he led the Vietnamese to sovereignty. So all this incident regarding this Ho Chi Minh, he came into the scene when the Second World War was going on. The Second World War, it broke out in 1939. It ended in 1945, okay? It broke out in 1st September 1939 with Hitler invading Poland, okay? Then it ended in 1945 because of the U.S. bombing the two cities of the Japanese, that is Hiroshima and Nagasaki. So the Second World War had broken out and the Vietnamese also, that is under the leadership of Ho Chi Minh, he introduced or he formed a new army which is called as Viet Minh. 
Vietmin, or in other words, it is also called as guerrillas army or guerrillas warfare. And this Viet Minh, they were able to fight against their enemy. They fought against the French and they were able to get their independence. But as we have discussed, before getting their independence, the Vietnamese, they had to suffer a lot because on one side, they were fighting against the France, but with the Second World War breaking out, the Japanese, they were able to force the France to give them Indochina, okay? To give a part of Indochina to be used as their military base or military operation. So because of this, now the Vietnamese, they had to fight both the Vietnamese, uh, the French on one side and the Japanese on the other side. So this shows how much the Vietnamese had suffered, okay? And, or we can say under the control of the France also. Then on the other side, after the uh, war ended, the French, they had to face the Viet Minh, that is the army of Vietnam, and they were able to defeat them. That is the Viet Minh were able to defeat the France. And as I've said, in the end, the France, they decided to give it up because the war became too expensive, okay? It was too expensive for the France. And as I've discussed before, regarding colonialism, their main aim is profit. Whatever they do, they will do it just to get profit. So because of the France losing profit, they also decided to give up Vietnam. And because of that, we, had, we have discussed that they had a conference which is called as the Geneva Conference. And in this Geneva Conference, they decided, the world decided that Vietnam will be divided into two parts. That is North Vietnam and South Vietnam. So North went under the control of Ho Chi Minh. South went under the control of Bao Dai, okay, who was a puppet of the French government during the French rule. So Vietnam came to be divided into two and France also lost all her territories in Indochina. So that is how the Vietnamese, they got back their independence, okay, in 1954 at Dinh Binh Phu. Everything is written there in your text. Please make sure you go to your textbook. And if you have doubts on any part also, you can just underline it, okay? And as I've said before, later on when the school resumes, you can ask your doubts from your teacher, okay? So the France, they went away from Vietnam, but again, the US, they got interested in Vietnam, okay? And so now the Vietnam, again, they had to fight against the Americans. But as we have discussed just now, the Americans, they, in the beginning, they called for a peace talk, but the Vietnamese leader also, he refused. And so they started bombing them, okay? For 11 continuous night, they bombed the cities of Vietnam. And this made the Vietnamese to surrender. So in January 1974, a peace settlement was signed, which brought the war to an end, okay? And after the end of the war, what happened was, on 2nd July 1976, okay, Vietnam was reunified, that is, North Vietnam and South Vietnam, they again came together. They again came together and they even named, okay? They even named the city of Saigon as Ho Chi Minh Tre. So that is to do with the nationalist movement in Indochina. I hope I was able to make you understand some points. And as always, don't forget to read your textbook. Okay? because you are going to write for your metrics, so please make sure you go to your textbook. As I've said, if you have any doubts, underline it and try to clarify it from your teachers when the school resumes. So thank you, stay safe.